Hiya. Um, so let's kind of continue where we left off last time. Uh, sorry that I split this video in two. Um, I know it's a kind of awkward place. Um, but basically what we said is we have this idea of symmetry, which is basically saying that I can take my distribution. I take, I look at my distribution and if I flip it over, um, over some point V here, uh, then I get the same distribution. Nothing kind of changes. I can flip it and everything is okay. And then I said, okay, well, let's suppose that our variables are symmetric about zero. So I can kind of flip it over the zero and everything is okay. Um, well, what happens to the sum? Well, we can kind of see that the sum is also going to be symmetric about um, zero as well. Um, and here we saw this because um, each of the xi is symmetric. So you have to think about this a little, uh, but this is basically where we kind of ended up last time. Um, and so this we can actually do in a very similar way if we have xi being symmetric about vi. Um, and so it's, it's basically the same thing, except here what we're going to do is first we're going to convert each of these xi's into new random variables, um, and we make them equal to um, yi, which is xi minus vi. Basically this is helping us delete that vi. We're making this equal to zero. And then what that makes, what happens is then the yi is symmetric about zero, right? Um, because then if, so for example, if I have x, oops, if xi is equal to v, I'm v, um, is it vi? Yeah, vi minus x, um, which is equal to vi plus x. Um, then if I have yi is equal to um, xi minus vi, um, this is equal to vi minus x minus vi, but this is also equal to vi plus x minus vi. So this is equal to minus x and this is equal to plus x, right? Um, and so we have minus x and plus x, so we know it's symmetric about zero. So at this point, what we can say is, okay, let me add up the sum of the y. What's the sum of the y's? And then we know this Sn prime, where the prime is denoting for the y's. We know that this um, is going to give us kind of a very similar thing. So we know that these are symmetric about zero, kind of by the arguments from above. Um, so in essence, what we have is minus Sn prime and Sn prime uh, have the same distribution. Um, they're symmetric about zero, right? So this is really coming from here. Uh, so what does Sn look like, right? So Sn prime, uh, this is what? This is equal to x1. Uh, so y1 here, I'm converting to x1 minus v1. Uh, and then I have x2, so I have plus x2 minus v2, plus x3 minus v3. Uh, I guess I'll hide this for now. All the way up to x, I have n, yeah, minus vn. And I have that the same distribution must hold for this one. So s on prime, this is also... Um, I should have the opposite, right? So xn plus um, v1. Uh, no, I should have the minus, right? So this should be minus um, xn x, uh, x1 minus v1 uh, minus x2 minus v2, right? Because we want to put a minus in front of each thing. That's how we're doing this, um, this minus denotion, right? So we have this from this term here, minus Sn, is equal to the sum of the minuses. So we have minus Xn minus Vn. So here, if you, uh, if you look at this, I can push all the Vi to one side. And so I have Sn prime is just equal to Sn. I can just take my Xi here to make Xn, or to make Sn. And then I can just sum over, or I guess subtract, because I have the minus signs, sum over all the Vi. Uh, let's see what happens on the other side. So if I have minus Sn prime, well, I have um, I have all the minus um, Xi's, right? So I have minus um, Sn, right? But then now I have minus and minus, so I got plus sum of Vi. But notice how this, again, is just minus minus, right? So I have kind of, I can think of this as minus minus. So what do I have? Well, I have that they're symmetric over the, v the sum of the vi's, right? So what we have is, if I look at the probability that Sn prime, that this is going to have the same distribution, 
So if I make these equal to one another, and I plug in these numbers, so I say, okay, this means if I say Sn prime, this we said was equal to Sn minus sum of the i is equal to x. Um, and here we have uh, minus Sn plus the sum of the vi is equal to x, right? Uh, so this we just grabbed from before. Um, and then now let's kind of push the vi to the other side. So here we'll do vi to the other side. So we have Sn is equal to x plus the sum of the vi is equal to p, which is minus Sn of x minus the sum of the vi. And then I want to get rid of this minus sign, right? Um, so what happens if I get rid of this minus sign? Um, actually, well, yeah. Yeah, so if I get rid of this minus sign, I get P of Sn is equal to uh, minus um, X minus uh, Vi. Um, well, I guess it's kind of better to do uh, minus minus. So here, I'll just keep the minus here and plus. And so here you can kind of see we have the plus Vi being our Vi, right? So remember we have um, this uh, v plus x equal to p s n v minus x. This is where we have symmetry. So since we have the minus x and the plus x, we have minus x and plus x. This implies that s n is symmetric about the sum of the v i. So it's definitely a little weird concept, um, but in the next video, I'll look at an example and I think this will be a little more sensical in that way. Um, this video I probably shouldn't have cut in two, uh, but it was going to be super long otherwise, so hopefully that's okay for everyone. Um, so I will see you in the next video for an example. So see you then.